uh, we will get started here. Uh, we're talking about defending today. Um, so our, we don't have as many clips as we have the last couple of weeks, but we do have um, some really specific ones we're going to look at. Um, so if there are any problems, uh, let me do one thing with the meeting first. Maybe. Uh, this doesn't like me right now. I'm sharing my screen for a second. All right, okay, optimize and share. All right, so if there's a problem, let Nate know. You can hit me in the chat. You can see that my screen is still there. So um, I should be able to see your chat. So anyway, we're talking about defending principles today. So we're gonna look at a big picture defending and then as we go on in the next few weeks, we'll look at some more um, detailed aspects of defending. But uh, we started with a quote last week, if you were here, uh, and I know defending is not always the most exciting thing in the world, um, but first quote is, if you have the ball, you must make the field as big as possible, and if you don't have the ball, you must make it as small as possible. Um, if you all younger players don't know who Johan Cruyff is, uh, I've used a Dutch spelling. There's another spelling of it as well, so when you start typing it into Google, you might see a different spelling. Same guy. Um, Look them up, look up the videos, uh, look up some of his quotes on the game. They're very, very interesting. Uh, if you are a big Man City fan or Barcelona fan or Pep Guardiola fan, uh, he basically has influenced uh, people like that. Uh, Barcelona as a club, uh, he influenced greatly uh, when he went there uh, from Ajax uh, back in the 70s. So, uh, but basically when we have the ball, let's make the field as big as possible. When we don't have it, let's make it as small as possible. A little closer to home, Christine Rampone, uh, who played for the national team, won a couple of World Cups, uh, said, if we score, we might win. We might score four goals, but they score five. But if they never score, then we definitely aren't going to lose. We might tie 0-0, zero, zero, not the most exciting game in the world, maybe, although some 0-0 zero, zero games are exciting. But if we can defend well and not give up goals or give up fewer goals, then obviously we, we put ourselves in a better chance to win. So defending is important. Um, and even if you want to attack, you're not going to have the ball 100% of the time. So if you can defend really, really well and get the ball back a lot, you'll have the ball more often, hopefully. But if you don't defend well, you might spend large parts of the game chasing the ball around and nobody enjoys that. So game principles, basically what we can define defending as is deny the most dangerous spaces opponents can exploit force them into predictable areas, all right? And then apply maximum individual, so one person, and collective pressure, more than one person, uh, possible because ultimately, yes, we don't want the other team to score, but really we defend because we want the ball back, all right? Not allowing a goal is definitely a major part of it, but our really needs to be, can I get the ball back? So that's our, our overarching principle. The other parts of it is pressure. So we say, can we affect the ball carrier by eliminating, eliminating as much space as possible? Now, we might want to get really close to the ball carrier, as close as we possibly can, but we may not be able to get very close. Even then, we can still affect what the ball carrier does. And we'll definitely see some of these um, in here. So if you have a, a pencil and paper or even your phone, as I complete the slide, you might want to take a picture or write this down so you can refer to it and look at it as you're, as you're going along. So force. All right, can we channel the ball here? Can we just kind of make the player with the ball go into areas where we want them to go, all right? And that's predictable for everybody on our team so that we can shrink the field and make it smaller. If we can defend a smaller space, that makes our job much, much easier. If we have to defend the whole field, that's a much, much tougher thing to do. And then we want to deny. So can we eliminate the dangerous spaces that allow the opponent to get closer to our goal? those tend to be in the middle of the field. Um, so we want to eliminate those. If we can get a lot of pressure to the ball, then we want to eliminate as much space close to the ball carrier. If we can't get close to the player with the ball, then we're going to need to 
contaminate space that's dangerous that's further away from the player and probably well not probably but most definitely closer to our goal so think about long balls that are played in behind us all right um, those are things where we might have to defend the space behind us more than the space in front of us because we want to deny their ability to get to that most dangerous area of the field so our objectives again can we win the ball back that's our first objective all right again we don't want them to score goals but if we have the ball unless we're really, really done with it or really, really unlucky, then it's gonna be very difficult for them to score a goal. So our first objective needs to be to win it back. Our second one, can we destroy it? So can we just not allow them to have organized or sustained possession? So we wanna disrupt what they're doing. That might be a tackle. Uh, it might be just getting a toe poke and knocking the ball out of bounds. It might be disrupting their passes. So if they wanna play a short possession game, they can't connect passes quickly. They're constantly having to fight for the ball. It might be, again, to force them into certain areas of the field they don't want to go, all right? And then we go and make them predictable, all right? So, again, we make uh, we force them into areas we want them to go, and we make the field smaller. And then secure, all right, reduce the space the opponent has to create dangerous attack. Again, sometimes that's going to be by getting closer to the ball, as close to the ball as possible with as many players as possible. And sometimes we're not going to be able to do that, so we have to, we have to defend the space behind us, closer to our goal, so they can't play a long ball in behind us. So defending strategies. So can we dictate the game without the ball? Even though we don't have the ball, can we make the game go the way we want? All right, if they want to play a lot of long balls, then maybe we get enough pressure on them where they can't play the long balls, or we drop deep enough, quickly enough, so when we play a long ball, we're in position to win it and it never gets behind us. Uh, force play into predictable areas, again, um, that's a big one um, that we really, really need to think about. All right, it's not just kind of running up at a defender or at a player with the ball and just putting pressure on them. Put pressure on them. We really need to be thoughtful about it. Um, and then whenever we can, can we create numbers up? Can we squeeze them into smaller areas and can we put a lot of pressure on them? Uh, we're going to have to win individual battles. All right, how we're going to do that? Some coaches might like you to intercept the pass more. All right, some coaches might say, hey, I want you to put in a lot of tackles. Um, it's just going to depend somewhat on what your coach prefers. Sometimes it might prefer on what kind of game you're playing. If you are playing a team who likes to dribble a lot, you're going to have to put more tackles in. If you're going to play a team that wants to pass a lot, then you're going to have to try to read those passes and maybe intercept a few more. Uh, if you're playing a team that wants to play long ball, you're going to have to win probably win balls out of the air, maybe not necessarily in the air, but you're definitely going to have to be able to win duels with the player to win the ball out of the air. Um, so how that how we win individual battles is going to change uh, based on all those kind of factors. Uh, deny penetration centrally or between our lines. So that, that line between our, particularly our back line, whether you play with three or four at the back and the midfield. All right. If players get in there, it's, if the opponents get in there, it can be difficult for us to figure out who's going to go and deal with that player. And then the most dangerous area of the field um, is inside the penalty area. All right, so can we dominate that space inside the pedal area, especially in the middle? Basically, if you think about the width of the six yard box, can we just, can we dominate that area in the penalty box if, if that's equal to the width of the six yard box? So our tasks, so we talk about, these are strategy, there's things that we need to do. These are ideas, so force play into predictable areas, but now these become tasks. So our first task as a team is we have to put pressure on the ball. In order to regain, in order to disrupt, in order to force, in order to deny, we've got to get pressure on the ball. And then we've got to create numbers. So our team has to be willing to do the work and get into areas where we can have more numbers than they do. All right. We have that first player. So that very first point that we discussed, primary pressure. All right. Um, that a lot of coaches probably will refer to that as pressure. Obviously, that, that word is the same. But I say it's primary pressure. It's the first person to pressure. Um, the secondary and support pressure, probably what you, the term you've probably heard a lot is cover and balance. Um, I don't particularly use those words because cover to me is a passive word. It means I'm waiting to see if something happens. The way I, I like my teams to defend, I like my, my cover defender to actually be more active. I like them to be somebody who tends to win the ball. I like them to be more aggressive. So I just use a more aggressive word. I say they're secondary pressure. They're the second layer of, of somebody who's going to go and apply pressure instead of being somebody who's covering, just kind of waiting for something to happen. Um, so those terms are, are interchangeable. Again, and, and your coach might 
have a different phrase. Um, the important thing is that you just remember the concept. Um, so for me, secondary and support pressure, that's going to be as close to the player, that primary pressure or the, the pressure defender as possible. So if that primary pressure defender can get close to the ball, then everybody else on the team needs to squeeze up closer to the ball as well. If that primary defender cannot get pressure on the ball, then we need to drop off a little bit and be aware of that space behind us so that the other opponent can't play a long ball in behind because the ball carrier has a little bit more time and space to play a longer pass. And then once we force the ball into predictable areas, we have to get those numbers in there and we have to go in with the purpose of, again, regain the ball. Can we win the ball? Can we tackle the ball? Or can we at least keep it there in that small area and not let them get out? More team tasks. Um, if we lose the ball, all right, this is going to be true of every team pretty much. If we lose it, can we get it back right away? How quickly can we get it back? Now, if we can't get it back right away, every team might defend a little bit differently. All right. We have to move together. So if one player goes to press, we all have to squeeze up. If we don't, we're not pressing or we're dropping off the player even, we all have to make sure that we drop off. If we're all shifting across to the right, then we all need to be shifting across to the right. Um, so we can't just have some, some players doing one thing and other players not doing anything else or doing something opposite. Otherwise, think about uh, if you play in the back line and you want to play an offside trap, if you're playing a back four and three players step up and one player just chills out and stands, well, guess what? Good chance the other team might be onside. So we didn't have that collective movement that we needed. And now all of a sudden that team's onside and behind us going to goal. All right. Um, uh, team task. Can we keep the, as, can we keep play in front of us? All right. As many lines as possible. So we've got the defending line, the midfield line and the forward line. The more players we have between the goal and the player with the ball, the, harder it's going to be for them to score a goal. So can we as a group get between the ball and our goal to make it more difficult to get there? And then again, we need to shrink the field. All right. And the where is going to depend on the location and the quality of the primary pressure, but we want to make that field as small as possible. So again, closer to the ball, we want to, sh we want to step up and shrink the space around the ball. If a primary pressure is farther away from the ball, then we're going to want to drop deeper and protect centrally um, closer to our own goal. So that's the team tasks. We look at individual player tasks. So we talk about getting primary pressure on the ball. Well, the speed, angle, and distance that you approach the ball carrier is going to, you're going to have to manage that. All right. If you go in fast, you might close the ball down quickly, but you have to read the player. If the, if the player with the ball is also going fast, then it might be easier for them to go around you. Um, so we want to get as close as we possibly can, but we do not want that player to go by us. And when we get as close as we can without allowing the player to go by us, if we can't win the ball or we can't tackle the ball, then we have to make sure that we are making that player with the ball go where we want them to go. So we dictate the game. All right. We don't allow them to decide, are you going left? Are they going left? Are they going right? We say, hey, I'll let you go to the left. I am not going to let you go to the right. Now, everybody else on your team knows we go to the next point, the secondary and support pressure, they know, hey, she's forcing her to the left. So we all have to slide into that channel to the left because that's where the ball is going to go. The primary pressure defender is going to do her job and force it to the left. So now we can start to slide over to the left. Hey, she's getting closer to the ball now. She's reducing the time and space that player has on it. So she can't play a longer pass. Her options are more limited. So now we can all step closer to the ball as well. Or she can't get it close enough. She can only get about five yards away from her. So that player with the ball can play a long ball down the line. So we need to drop off a little bit and be aware that she might knock that ball down the line. So we shift to the left where she's showing, but we're going to spill a little deeper. So if the long ball does come in, it's in front of us and we don't have to turn around and chase it back towards our own goal. Uh, transition between zonal and direct player marking. I don't say man to man because if we're playing girl soccer, there's no man on the field. Um, uh, maybe the referee. Um, so I say direct player marking. Um, so transition, if your team play, uh, most teams I think play zonal. There might be some teams that play man-to-man. -man. There's nothing wrong with either one. Um, but at times you're going to have to shift. Even if you play man-to-man -man, uh, or direct, you mark your direct player, um, you are going to have to, at some point, you're probably going to end up in a, a numbers down where the attacking team has three players and you have two players. Well, you are by definition at that point playing zonal defense. Um, so we need to shift into those two things sometimes. The most um, frequent scenario that you see this happen 
is when the ball goes into a wide area close to the goal we're defending and the opponent is going to serve a crossing. At that point, the players in the box need to, as much as possible, pick up a direct opponent and mark that opponent and stay with that opponent until the ball is cleared. All right, so that would be a time where we were shift, we were zonally defending, and now all of a sudden the ball's in the box. I've got to pick up the closest player, and I've got to stay with them the entire time. All right, and then the other another task is immediately confront an opponent. So I might not be marked, so the ball is played from one player to another player on the opposing team. As the ball is traveling from that first player to that second player, we have to confront that player, especially if that ball is being played forward. All right especially if that ball is being played. If it's play, being played back to the goalkeeper, then we may not. But if it's being played forward or play, being played behind or between lines, then we have to get pressure on it as soon as we can. So uh, one more slide of tasks. All right, we need to win our individual duels. All right, that comes down to a player. All right, we said that's a strategy, but, you know, for overall defending, now it comes down to how am I going to do that? All right, so uh, that, that become, comes down to the individual players to win those battles with the opponent that's closest to you or with the opponent who has the ball. Um, clarity of action. So when I step on the primary pressure defender and I am stepping to an opponent with the ball, what is my purpose for stepping to that player? I need to know that as I'm going into it. I can't just sprint at them as fast as I can and say, well, let's see what happens here. I need to know, am I stepping to, uh, hey, I think I can win that ball. All right, and, and a lot of coaches, they'll talk about um, external commitment, meaning you probably heard this, when do I pressure? Well, there's a, a bad pass to that player, or they're facing their own goal, or the ball is bouncing, or the ball is played in the air, or there's a bad first touch. Um, you know, those are cues that tell you, hey, I need to go put a lot of pressure on the player. But there are some internal cues as well for players, and that is, um, am I, how fast am I? Can I get there? So the 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 more likely you are to be able to do one or two, regain the ball or tackle the ball, destroy it, then the faster you're going to want to go in to close the ball down. If I can't do that, then I've got to think, okay, I, maybe I can't go in as fast as I want. Um, but can I get there and direct the ball carrier? Can I force him or her one way? If I can do that, then maybe I'm going to go in pretty hard. All right. Um, so those, so those internal cues are going to matter. Can I get there? the distance I am right now from, from, from that point to where the player with the ball is or is going to receive the ball, I have to make sure that I can get there to do one of those things, win the ball, destroy it, or force them one way. All right. So, um, so those factors, that's going to change from player to player. Some players who are blazing fast are going to try to close down more balls than maybe a player who's a little bit slower. Um, so those are things that internally you need to recognize in yourself as a player. Some players can read the game really well and know where the ball is going to be before it actually gets there, and they can start moving there ahead of time, whereas other players maybe don't see the game the same way. So, again, that, that's going to be down to you as an individual. Um, positioning to encourage passes, all right? So sometimes if I, if I want the ball to go to a certain area, but I go stand by the, the opponent who is in that area, it's unlikely that the opponent, unless they're incredibly dumb and, or being really, really nice to us, is going to play the ball to that opponent. So I actually have to stand away from that player a little bit, and I have to anticipate that the pass is going to be there. Um, but I, I can't go there too early, otherwise the pass will not arrive. So I have to position myself to encourage the ball to go to those predictable areas. All right? And then whenever I can, I want to double team. That's why when I say this, this, the secondary support player, I want my cover defender to double team as much as possible. And often, because the primary pressure defender is making the ball carrier predictable, the player who's in the best position to actually win the ball or destroy the ball is that cover defender or that secondary pressuring defender. So we have to make sure that we're aware of that um, responsibility when we're playing. So now we'll start looking at some clips. All right. And the way we looked at this, we broke it down. We're going to start looking at some individual defending. All right. Uh, we'll look at three or four clips of individual defending. Uh, and then we'll break it down into small group, like groups of two and three. We'll build that up to groups that are a little bit bigger. Uh, and then finally, we'll look at team collective defending. So there's about five sides in each one. All right. So this is obviously off the goal kick. All right. This is uh, one thing I'll say is um, if you were in the first webinar, I picked all St. Croix players. Uh, they happen to be all female players because that's who I had the video for. Last week's webinar was all professional players from all over the world. Um, and this week, it's, it's uh, youth players. Uh, we've got 
um, clips from, these are U, actually the age group on this is U15, but most of the players in the U.S. and several of the players from Mexico are actually 14. So a lot of you are at that age. So these are players who are your age doing this. Obviously, they're national team. Uh, I've also got clips of the boys from the DA um, playoffs last year, the semifinals. Um, LA Galaxy and uh, Solar from Texas. Those are U16, U17 players. So a little bit older, but these are all youth players that we've used in our clips. So we'll get going here. This is the first one. You just see that individual pressure. You see how she takes that player away. Again, watch her approach here. See how she approaches it, curves the run. She wants the play to go inside, so she takes away that outside channel, all right, and just forces a bad pass. This player still tries to go wide, but there's no way for her to get a decent pass. So this is some defending in the midfield. So we'll see this player right here. See, she's trying to force her, doesn't let her go. So again, you watch, you see she sets her up, and she says, okay, oh, I always do that. I always hit the wrong button. You think I'd learn after three weeks, but apparently not. <laughs> Oh, all right. That one wasn't me. I hit the right button there. I think, at least I thought I did. All right. Third time's the charm. Right there, you see she's trying to force her to the right, to the inside. All right. If you remember that first clip, this is the same team. This is the US U15 team. Uh, that player higher up was trying to force the play inside. So apparently that is their team's strategy. All right. Uh, other teams may want to force or shouldn't, be, shouldn't say that's a strategy. It's actually their tactic. There's a there's a difference, but they want to force inside. Again, that's going to be a team preference or a coach preference. All right, so forcing her inside, the player tries to go outside, and she's like, no, 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 you're not going there. I, I can't let you go there. I need to make the play predictable for my teammates. So this is on a little different area. All right, this is actually uh, the U-17 Mexico-USA uh, game. This was the final of the U-17 World Cup qualifying tournament. Um, so you see we're going to focus on this player. There's a long ball over the top. U.S. player is chasing it. She's attacking this goal here. So you're just going to see the player recover and get wide, and then she's just going to stand her up 1v1 in the wide area. So again, see how she cuts her off right there and says, nope, you're not going to. I'm not letting you go to the goal. And now moves her feet, moves her feet, just stands her up, doesn't buy any of her moves there, and defends it pretty well, earns a foul. All right, this is, again, this is back to the U.S., all right, Mexico. So we're going to pay, pay attention to something really, really. So we talked about, here's the defender. This is a 1v1 battle. If anybody knows Olivia Moultrie, this is the player from uh, California who turned pro a year, year ago and made a, a big fuss, um, plays for Portland Thorns now. Uh, so this is Olivia. Uh, not long after she went through all that turning pro stuff, um, Here's the central defender from Mexico. She can't get too close there. If she comes out too far, she'll open up this player for an easy pass. All right, so she has to sit back a little bit here, all right, and allow Olivia to come at her a little bit. But you notice how she positions her body. She's encouraging Olivia to go away from this extra player that she has, this teammate, and encouraging her to go here. It's also encouraging Olivia to go to her left foot, which Olivia is a good player, but her left foot is not her strongest foot. And so she's, she's doing this. So even though she's at least seven yards away from her, the way she's positioning herself, all right, is affecting what Olivia can do. So we ideally would like this defender to be here, closer to her, but even though she's far away, she's still able to affect her with her movement body position, all right? And instead of moving towards her, she's just gonna wait for Olivia. She knows Olivia's dribbling at, dribbling at her. She knows she wants to go try to score a goal. So she's just going to let her come to her and read it and go out wide there. So we'll play that one more time all the way through at speed. You just see it. She sees what's happening. Now she holds her ground, waits for her to come, puts the tackle in, all right, and not and kind of kills the danger there. All right, I think we have what? Yep, this is one more individual defending clip in midfield. This is the player who's recovering across right here. And you see, she's just going to keep her going inside. She wants her to go inside, wants her to go inside. See how hard she works to get around her there to make sure that she goes back to the inside. We have some more individual defending here. A lot of players reaching in to win the ball, not 
not effective. So we talk about that decision making, what are the tasks? You know, in this case, that's a clever little flick. But at this point, do we really need to win the ball? Probably not. It's 1v3 there. Again, we, she goes in to win the ball there, and the player gets around her and puts in a cross. Doesn't end up being dangerous, but it's a cross nonetheless. Now, here we got a little bit. Okay, we'll make them go back. So a little bit more patient defending there, all right, and they were able to get out. So that's the individual part. Now hey, Joe, can I chime in? Quick comment? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, you want to go back? So just before, no, um, yeah, go back to that, the com, the one where she's defending at the top of the box and she pushes her onto her left foot. Um, oh, this, before this you one. leave the topic. This one. Yep. Uh, back one. That one. Um, so just before you leave the topic of the individual defending piece, you know, I'll, I sometimes tell players, you know, play the game, the game within the game. So like if that's a matchup you're constantly going up against, you're going to want to pay attention to things like, is she left footed? Is she right footed? Does she like to come at you with speed? You know, what happens if you give her space and maybe just completely take away that right footed shot? You know, what are the things that that player decides to do next? So like a lot of individual defending is, you know, what are the characteristics about that opponent? So like, like Joe mentioned here in this clip, you know, this is a player. She wants her right foot, especially in this part of the field entering the box. So take that away from her and then see what else you can do. And it's pretty clear that was something that was kind of drawn up before that game ever started. You know, and as the game progresses, I'd start to figure out, you know, what does she do next? You know, because she's going to also try to adapt and try to, if you take away her right foot, what will she try to do next? And, you know, again, it's, it's the game within the game. How will I shut down this particular defender? Because it may be that answer may be different for the next opponent, you know, or the next player that comes at you. Um, so I just want to throw that little bit out there. Um, you know, pay attention to some of these cues within the game um, and make sure you're, you're using that information throughout the game to shut down, especially some of these unique players, because this is a very talented one here. Um, side on, nice and low, you know, concede the space. She's denying the shot, put her on her left foot. Why not? Let's see what she does. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to throw that piece in there. The game within the game is something that I'll sometimes – ask players to pay attention to and those are things that I'm asking them to do it's the, those individual matchups those characteristics about the player yeah that, I mean the game within the game is, is a, a great way to like it's just another way and some of these like um, the way we stated in the slide is like whatever you're going to remember is the important thing so the game within the game for me is win your individual battles right so you've got to figure out how am I going to win that like you're going to see some of the same players again and again in a game um, so how am I going to win that battle? So, yeah, so that's, that's a, a great example of that, that game within the game. Win your battles, win your battles. And the way you win your battles is by, you know, paying attention and reading what's going on. So that's a good point, Jesse. Thank you. So now we're going to start looking at some um, clips of, now we're going to start getting fancy here. All right. So we see the ball's played out here, and we look at that player is going to go press. These two players are going to squeeze. They're going to make it predictable. They want it to go into the green area, all right, the green shaded area. That's where they want it to go. That's where it's made predictable. So now they forced it. They, they want, again, they want the pass to go down the line here, all right. They have denied the pass inside, and the pass backward could be dangerous because they can just squeeze that even more. So now the fullback has stepped up. Play has been made predictable. It's easy for that fullback to read where the bass is going, when it's being played, and why it's being played. So now he can step and close the space, and they win the ball back by a mistake from the opponent. All right? So, again, we can just look at it one more time. All right? And then the rest of the clips – well, we got one more clip where we got these fancy drawings, but the rest of them don't. So we're just going to kind of play them through and talk about them. All right? But, again, you see that pressure. As soon as the ball is played out wide – those two players start to step. They didn't go before. They waited for the ball to be played. Now they're squeezing. They slow their run down because all they really want to do is force the opponent down the line. They don't want to go get too close and allow them to play back into the middle too easily. So they've made it really obvious where the pass is most likely to go. And now they're able to step and force and win that ball back. So um, these are just two I would chime in here. with the comment. <laughs> Yeah. Can you do another webinar just for coaches on how you just did all that with yeah, moving the care the people? That was fun. Um, 
I will say, you know, again, I like to use certain trigger words. So I'm not shouting, you know, 10 directions in the middle of the game. It's one trigger word. And a lot of times it's, you know, which passes are you baiting? You know, if you notice timing was really critical. Sometimes you want to stand off of that opponent a little bit because you want to bait that pass. I want that pass to come in. And as soon as they take the bait, then we all now squeeze the space collectively. So, yep. you know, you're, there is no right or wrong. You force it wide, force it central. You know, it depends on the team. It depends on the opponent, you know, certain qualities of your players. Uh, I like to force central higher up the field so that I can pick off that pass in the middle. And then I'm going to go while everybody is pulled apart because there's going to be a lot of space to work with. Um, you know, so, sometimes you want to force them maybe away from their better players. So, uh, knowing what what is that trigger, like which passes are we going to bait? And then when they take the bait, what are we all going to do? If you can figure that piece out, you'll be able to adapt to, you, you can easily change things on the fly, right? Let's bait that pass and let's force to that player. Uh, so sorry, Joe, I wanted to chime in there. Thank you for no, doing that. Fine. No, I, I, that's a good point. Cause like for me, like this is the nine, right? So I ask my nine and then this is the 10. So primarily the nine, but sometimes the nine is out of the picture. So I asked the 10 to do it. All right. Very good. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I say split the center back. So here, center back, center back. Now they've already dropped their defending mid in there. So it makes it a little bit more of a challenge. Um, that's So you'll see them hold up a little bit. But I, I tell my nine and 10, your job is to split the center backs. Make the center back, make it impossible for this center back to play a ball to this center back. So that's their primary goal. I'm the opposite of Jesse. I like to force wide. I like to use the touch line as another defender. And then I like to have the opposite side of the field unbalanced so we can quickly play a diagonal ball into that space and attack. That's just me. Again, Jesse said, there's no right or wrong way. It's just how things are done. Um, you know, how your coach wants it done, it might be based on the team that you have. So I ask the seven and 11, the wide players, I never want them to step into that center back because if they do, the pass to go out here is too easy. All right, so I ask these players to be super patient, and I'd prefer them to block this pass in here and allow this pass out here. And once it goes out there, I want them to press. So we'll see that here in this clip. So this is just a restart from a free kick. So the, the six has it. So really kind of being patient. Now he's going to go. Now that nine goes because the ball's at the center back and he can split them. All right, and he goes and pressures again, force the mistakes. Fullback's able to step up and win the ball, and now all of a sudden – they're able to see this is for me that's how I want like I wish we would gone that team would have been able to play forward there but that's how we want to look at it uh, that's why I want to play inside but uh, Jesse's philosophy is just as valid because you win the ball in the middle of the field and you have the whole field to attack it's it's harder for the opponent to know where you're going to go so again just another pressing example here a little bit higher up the field Galaxy is actually playing a 4-4-2, so it's a little bit different. The center back's responsibility, you can see forward, forward. They each take a center back, and now this wide midfielder has to wait, all right? And he had some secondary pressure inside in case he missed that tackle. So, again, now we're going to look at a different part of the field. So we see there, midfielder steps out, and we've got that support pressure, all right? Forces it wide. The fullback has a good idea of where it's going to go if the player in front of him gets beat, and he just steps in to destroy the play. All right. It would have been nice if he could have won it, but he couldn't, so he just destroyed it. Get it, throw in, get your numbers. Going to have a similar example here, and this time you watch the fullback's covering. This time he's going to try to play. Oops, and he loses it. Is that bad or good? I mean, it's just something to think about. What's your purpose? Do I, do I need to try to – it's nice if we can play and regain the ball but sometimes we're better off just destroying it and getting numbers up and getting three set. All right. So now we're going to start looking at a little bit more collective pressure. All right. This is the uh, Mexico, Brazil. This is the U-17 World Cup from last year. So we're going to do the fancy drawings again. So Mexico is playing a 4-4-2. So you see there, oops, went too far. 4-4, hello. 4-4-2. So you see the two forwards there, right there. Their job is to force that force the player with the ball to go to her right and not let that ball go between them in that red hashed area. So we're going to wait. Now the ball goes out wide to Brazil's fullback and Mexico's wide midfielder is going to step up to put pressure on the ball and that forward. 
has to have the timing and speed of our approach to be good enough that they can get there, but also not too early that they bypass. So that now allows the fullback to go up because it's very predictable where the ball is going to go. You can see Mexico's shape there with defending. They've got good numbers. It's pretty obvious where the ball is going to go, which makes it very easy for the Mexican defenders to read. It almost has to go there or she has to dribble out. So it's a predictable pass, very easy to read. Mexico defender steps in front. She anticipates it. All right, she does it. She disrupts it. She doesn't win the ball, but she disrupts the play enough that Brazil just has to put a toe poke in. But the space there, the fullback now for Mexico is in a good position to go step and win the ball. And now, so you talk about Jesse wants to go to the middle of the field. There's an example. You look, see all that space now and those players that Mexico has to start their attack and go forward to go. So that would be a good example of a player that want to go win the ball a little bit more towards the middle of the field when possible. So we got a couple more examples of this. Uh, so that was building out of the back. This one, remember we talked about space in behind. So there's, notice the time, the player on the ball. She wins it. She has time and space to play forward. So you see the back, the defenders for the U.S. drop off. They try to play the long ball, but they can't because U.S. recognize, hey, the space that's dangerous is behind us. So we actually need to drop. We see the same thing again. Here, Mexico wins it, some time and space, tries to play it. Defenders all dropped off. Now they allow the player to win it, but they know, hey, we have numbers up. We're okay. So as soon as they recognize this, so they allow the target player to win the ball. They drop off. And now one steps up to put pressure because she knows she has numbers behind her and they can protect that space pretty easily. And now they regain the ball. Here again, Mexico, US. This time it's forced wide. They're trying to play the ball on the ground. Mexican central defender anticipates it steps, disrupts the play and allows Mexico to regain possession. The same one here. So now, the ball gets switched. You see the fullback start to get wide. Now he sees he can't get there and drops off. Central defender steps and win the, wins the ball. They start counterattacking. We have the same thing going the other way now. The fullback gets there. The midfielder now comes behind him to make sure that he can provide secondary pressure. And again, they win the ball and are able to get out. Uh, hey, Joe, can, yeah. you re can you go back to the beginning? part of that one yep uh yep so watch the three midfielders on their movement the three that are in the middle how much they yep those three through here don't stop in white right they continue to move back it's a subtle thing but this is where we talk about it a lot of your coaches talk about how you the work rate through the middle and yeah, I'm not I'm not sliding out wide to go win the ball, but I know the ball is going to come back there at some point, right? So as the ball gets played out wide, you can see the two center or the three in the middle they're going to stay. And then as we run it, you're going to see that the the one guy I think he's probably one of the eights is going to win the ball off of the off right here. He wins the ball, and then we're up, right? Whereas if they would have stayed all the way up the field, it'd have been a 50-50. And then the last thing, and this outside defender for blue actually goes and gets the ball. We've watched a lot of times as a defender being behind the player and letting him win it. At least that time that guy stepped. Well, here, here, watch this. This is, oh crap. So you talk about like the defending work rate and this is where we can dig down deep into, into things is the player who wins the ball at the end here, if I can scroll to it. So this is the player who ultimately wins the ball. He is one of, he's uh, their eight. He's yep. Solar. So he's here. This is the fullback for Solar. And why, he's just going to continue to run. A lot of midfielders would have stopped right here, but he's like, well, hold on. There's all this, there's a big gap and there's an overlapping player. So he continues to do the work there. So Nate's point, like, you know, it, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but it's also intelligence because he just, he recognizes where that's the dangerous space is. His teammate has stepped out and left a big gap. 
center back doesn't want to slide too far and get pulled out. So he just continues to do the work there. So now Mexico is just going to try to keep the ball on one side. Just keep the ball on this side. You see they're stepping, maybe a little bit over aggressive there. But we're defending in more numbers now and with the purpose of, hey, we need to keep them on the touchline. Once we have them on the touchline now, now we can keep them to one side and have a better chance of regaining the ball. This is a really good one. This is one of my favorite ones. Just leading him into a pressing trap right here, all right? The only passing lane he really has is to this player right here, but this player is just waiting for it. He's not getting too close. He's, he's baiting it. He's encouraging that pass. Not really sure what the Galaxy player saw there, but, I mean, the defending from Saul, the, the organization is really, really good. You see that player stepping in. Again, why am I, why am I stepping? Why am I closing the ball? Why is that player? He's going to try to win it, but that's a risky move in that part of the field which almost cost them. Again, a small number is kind of a, a ball we see a lot, ball bouncing in and around the box. Pay attention to these players. Look, they're going to force it back inside. This player is just waiting, 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 and now is their opportunity to win it. So a really good job of support. She's just a support player right now. There's the pressure. There's the cover or primary, secondary. This is support. Well, all of a sudden, now she becomes the primary defender because, and I said, often those are the players who win the ball. Um, the primary pressure defender doesn't always win the ball. We see here, Nate talked about midfielders. Watch the recovery in here of the midfielders. Midfielder, midfielder, taking away that gap centrally. And easy to win the ball back. Working together collectively to get it back. All right, so here we go. We sw a big switch. All right, you see, we talk about collective movement. Watch the solar players. Every player moving back to deny space. All right, now they're going to switch a few times. One thing I'll say in this is, and I, Jesse made this point when we were looking at these clips, um, trying to decide which ones we were going to use. Galaxy is able to switch the ball. All right, and one thing you'll see, particularly on the boys' side at the higher level, and, and on the girls too, uh, uh, at the, uh, maybe a little bit higher level, um, is the ball's going to go back and forth a lot. Like we want to keep them on one side of the field, but sometimes we just can't do that. Um, so it's important that we're able to shift as a unit. So Nate's point about midfielders getting back and even forwards getting back at times, you have to do that work so that if we have these moments where a team has good possession and they're able to shift the ball from side to side, we have the numbers to deal with it and we can slide with the play and keep it in front of us. So you see that structure here that they have? Solar has good shape. Even though Galaxy is going to be able to switch the ball here, they're able to deal with it pretty well. All right? That's a good pass in. But again, we're going to keep that shape in here. We're going to try to keep them forced out wide. Why is this, play this player stepping? Uh, maybe he's a little off balance there. But again, they still have good numbers here. See, Galaxy has nobody in the box. Now, maybe this player needs to, we've got to be aware of this right here. But that's the only dangerous player for them other than the player on the ball. And because of that, it's pretty easy for Solar to deal with that, that attack. Now, again, we play it in here. There's one dangerous player right here that we've not accounted for. So Nate's talking about midfielders getting back. This player's a little bit slow in getting back. This player's a little bit slow in getting back. They're going to find the one player in that part of the field who can hurt them because now he has time and space and he can switch the ball again. This fullback though, watch his movement. Watch the center back come across. Watch that center back or that, yeah, that center back start to get back into position and recover. So they forced them away from goal. They forced them wide. It's not a great part of the field, but they've taken them away from the most dangerous part of the field. We, what, we Now we switch from zonal to man marking because there's going to be coming in. See the picking up, picking up the player. Okay, that's a shot, but we'll, like considering where the ball started or where it could have been going, we'll take that opportunity from them. So again, so just more collective defending a little higher. Just going to force them to go back. Round here, 
to the other side, but Mexico has the numbers here, so they're just going to slide across. No problem. We've got it. Now you talk about timing, maybe the Mexican Mexican player out here out wide. When the this is the trigger, the ball goes to the fullback. Then go close down, but wait. Takes her a little bit of time to get there. Able to find the wide player for the U.S. Causes them some problems. But again, we have the numbers. And then we're going to see another individual defending the out wide. And she's she's just going to stand her up. And now numbers come across. All right. So again, defending is not always about winning every situation, but it's being willing and able to address what does happen. All right. So we may not win that particular battle, but we're in a position where we can recover and not out allow anything to hurt us too badly. So again, even they got into a good good spot, but you look how hard everybody's working. Extra numbers there around the ball. Look at how many players are around the ball. Still have it. And again, watch inside the box how they pick start to pick up players or not pick up players. So they did not switch from zone to man. All right, and they almost got a dangerous opportunity here. So I'll chime in here real quick. Um, actually, when, when I was watching a lot of these clips, it was a really, they were all really fun to watch. Um, the, is it the Soul, Soul team? Yeah, Solar team. Yeah, Solar. Yeah. Okay. Solar team. You can, I mean, they're up two to one as the game wears on. They really just work on good defensive compactness. And as they get closer to their defensive third, they get tighter. And that central channel, the central vertical channel gets very, very compact. So it's really hard to find any sort of space in there. And Galaxy kind of resorts to distant shots or crosses just like that. Now, you have to switch to, to man, like individual marking in the box. I like to say, you know, touch tight. Like pick somebody and get touch tight. So like if you need to reach out and grab them, I mean, that's how tight you need to be. Um, and right, it's pretty clear somebody missed their job and it creates a small pocket and they're able to find somebody. So again, one of those trigger words could be, hey, in the box, just make sure you're all touch tight. So nobody gets freedom to you know, find a, a little bit of space. It didn't take much space to get a shot off or to redirect something in front of a goal. So everything has to be able, you have to be able to challenge it. And as you're in that box, you need to be able to be, you know, you need to get there on their touch, if not intercept it, win the ball, and then get out of trouble. And then as this game wears on, I mean, solar just, as long as you can absorb that much pressure, you're probably going to get some counterattacks out of it. Which eventually, actually, Solar goes and goes up 3-1 on a counterattack. But <laughs> one of the points uh, that Jesse made earlier about knowing the opponent, the player on the ball right now is Ochoa. He's their leading scorer uh, for the season. He, he has the, the first goal in the, in the game. Um, and so you talk about knowing the opponent. How, how do we let this player free in the box like that? We need, like, if there's one player we need to make sure we have taken care of, it's him. So again, we go to that game within the game or winning your individual duels. Um, that's important. Now, to be be fair, leading you know players who are their leading their team's leading goal scorer or players who are special are are that for a reason, right? They're not always easy to defend, but we have to know that going in um, to the situation. And this is again, this is a national semifinal, so, um, so the teams would know each other fairly fairly well. Um, in the DA, there's video of every game available, so they could do scouting and they can see these type, types of things. So again, when you get to the college level, the expectation is that you're gonna know your opponent pretty well. Um, and so you're, you're gonna have to know these things. When we play at the youth level, sometimes we show up to the field and we have no idea who we're playing, especially if we're at a tournament. Um, so you just kind of you know figure it out as the game goes on. Um, but as you, as you get to a higher level, you're gonna know your opponents and the expectation is gonna be that you are going to play uh, in a manner that reflects that you know your opponents and you have some idea of what their strengths are. So again, just that idea of, of collective, they're just going to keep the tempo to the U.S. game slower than they probably want to, and they're just going to keep them going back. We're not allowing them. You see the number of players involved from Mexico, not being impatient, but just saying, hey, we're going to force you to where we want you to go, all right, and we know where that we can predict where that's going to be. All right. 
And again, just watching the collect, this is a pretty long clip, I believe, but Solar again, you see it's 2 nothing at this point. This is the very start of the, the, the first half. So it was 2 nothing at halftime. And you can see early on in this in this half what it's going to be like. Galaxy, you're down 2 nothing. We'll let you have the ball, especially in this area. And then, as Jesse said, we're just going to sit in and keep our shape. All right, and the closer you get the goal, the less space we're going to allow you. Um, and so you just see that right here. You just watch them shift. Okay, Galaxy's going to find some gap in the interior channels of the half spaces. Um, but that's just the way it's going to go. Again, we can uh, – it's the same clip. Again, just that collective defending inside. We see where the, the pressure is. We know that the ball is going to get crossed in, so we've got to retreat. And we've got to protect this area of the field, all right? So we might not be able to get as close to the ball carrier as we like, uh, but we can still protect the dangerous spaces. Again, you just watch this, the two central mids and how they're trying to force the play into certain areas of the field and deny it into others. And they're protecting the central area. How many, how many clips now is this for Galaxy, like Jesse said? Um, about the, the crossing in the box, that this is something Solar is okay with. Um, now, this is pretty promising there. So, I mean, again, it's not always going to – you're going to have to avert some danger sometimes to defend well. It's not always about being good. Sometimes it's about being a little bit lucky. So, we don't have enough pressure on the ball. Again, we, this is something we probably would drill down a little bit more on if we were looking at defending in the final third or defending closer to our goal. But overall, you get the idea. This is Galaxy actually defending, a rarity in the second half. See how quickly they put pressure on the ball, and now they're counterattacking, and now in transition, Solar has to defend. Again, they're just trying – they lost it, but can we keep them wide? Can we keep them uh, – that's nothing. We're okay with that. At 2-1, we're okay with that, keeping them wide and those kind of chances. So hopefully you got a pretty good picture um, of some of what we talked about in the slides. Again, next week we're going to work on playing out of the back. We, you know, we looked at um, dribbling and passing cues the first two weeks. Um, and so next week we'll look at uh, drill down into playing out of the back. Um, and the following week we'll look at some more of the defending aspects of it, about uh, how, we, uh, how we press, um, how we press closer to the goal we're attacking. Um, so we'll drill down into that a little bit more, and then we'll do the same thing in, in, in the other areas of the field as well. So. Um, really appreciate um, your attendance today. Again, these are on uh, posted to YouTube, so we will get them up. Uh, the first two are up as well, so if you ever want to look at them again, or if you have uh, colleague coaches, if you have other coaches that you know, or if uh, you have players, uh, uh, for the players, if you have teammates who didn't get a chance to see it, or if you just want to review it again, you can go onto YouTube, um, onto the channel, or you can go onto the Stay Active page on the St. Croix website, and then you can... Uh, uh, you can you can find it there. Um, so, again, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can use chat uh, by all means, or you can get in contact with me or Jesse or Nate or even your coach, and, and we can go from there. But thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Have a good week. Yep.